So the other day I noticed this port here, which is supposed to be sealed. It looked like someone had done something to it and I could run a wire all the way in here to the, uh, to the hole there for the check valve. So what I did is I drilled it out and tapped it and now I'm gonna insert this little set screw I'm going to put some of this um, stuff on the uh, on the threads just to make it a permanent seal and then I may even add a little bit of epoxy on top. That's it. So I have the little bushing. I'm gonna add a little bit of red Loctite. Then I have a, a bolt here that I'm gonna use as a guide. get that pushing started. Drive it all the way in. Then remove the bolt and we have the bushing in place. It's all the way in there, properly seated. And we're gonna repeat the same procedure for the next, for the other side and the other bushing some red loctite and use the bolt as a guide give it a tap just to get it started That is it. Now they tell you to also run the the bed through the bushings in case because of all the hammering in case they get a little deformed. Let's do that. And that's all there is to it. Pretty straightforward.
Okay, so new bushings in. What I'm gonna do next is just for, just to try it. Boy, that's a, that's a snug fit in there. Oh yeah. I guess you can put a little bit of WD-40 in there if necessary, but oh my goodness. Absolutely no play. Wow. That is huge. Wow. What a difference. Let me tell you. If you're having an issue where you hear some rattling, a little bit of, you feel a little bit of movement, this will totally fix that issue. And as you can see, there's Plenty of free movement, so that is fantastic. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah, there's absolutely no play there. Great. This vacuum brake has been a pain in the neck so far. I um, I don't even know how this is gonna slide in there. As you can see, it just slides all the way in so easily by hand. But this one is shot, so there's there's nothing I can do with it. And I even filed these tabs a bit, make sure there was no burrs or anything like that. And you can see they're wide open. However, this one is gonna, it's really gonna need some convincing to go in. Okay, so before I, start hitting this thing with a hammer. I'm gonna file this bracket just a tiny bit. Knock down just a fraction of an inch. Okay. I seem to be, help, be helping a whole lot, so. I mean, it is better, but anyway, I'll have to um, get the hammer and, and punch and uh, see about driving that sucker in. Okay, so after some additional filing and tapping with the hammer, I got it pretty much installed, as you can see in here. And it seems to be properly seated now. And everything seems to be aligned correctly. But um, what a pain in the neck and what a disappointment that this little part here was not to specs. This one, it's easy to see that the space is a lot bigger when, it, when you slide it in, but this, uh, uh, this is an original part. This is an aftermarket part and sometimes that's what happens. So if yours is okay and it only looks rough, you can clean it up and reuse it because you may run into the same situation. And I was afraid that, you know, would weaken th these little tabs here and um, th things would break. So anyway, that part is done. Seems to be okay, thank God. So we'll move on to the, uh, to the next project. Okay, so I have the new bushings installed and the throttle shaft is also in there. So what I'm going to do next is 
start by installing the throttle plates for the primaries. These I'm gonna, secondaries I'm gonna leave alone. There's no, nothing wrong with them. So let me uh, get situated here and I can start installing the, um, the primary plates. As you can see, I cleaned them up. So, and I'm gonna use new, new screws. So let's get started. Let's try this. I really wish I had a better screwdriver for this job. I started one already because it took some doing. As you can see, these are not the easiest to handle. They're so small. Once you get them started, there's no issue. And I don't know if you can see that there's a little bit of movement here sideways. And all I'm doing here is I'm just going to get them snug. I'm not using any Loctite yet. I'm going to do that later one by one. I just want to get them properly centered. Once you get this one started, the next one should be a little easier. And these are brand new screws. And once you use the Loctite, you don't, they don't need to be staked. So that is, um, that is a big plus. And again, just make them snug. That's all there is to it. Basically what I'm trying to do here is make sure that there's not gonna be any major gaps. I'm going to take this off of the uh, stand. I'm going to look at, you know, the light. Once these are in place, th there's not going to be any lateral movement. And they feel really nice. So let me do that and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I think I got them center pretty, pretty good. And again, what I'm going to do before I call this part finished, I'm going to take one at a, out at a time, use some Loctite, and secure them properly in place. Next, what I'm going to do is install the um, fast idle cams and um, this little one here with the with the adjustment and this one just sits in there let me show you from the side this is what it looks like it's fully seated there this one has some freedom here and this one is the shaft is keyed for it so that's what you want to do and then you have the this screw with a big shoulder here and the spring okay so take the spring you connect the hook there to the lever then get it somewhat centered and get the screw started make sure that there's it is not binding binding and then you can take this portion of the spring and push it up and connect it under this tab and that's all the all the tension it needs and as you can see down here this is where the adjustment for the fast idle is and you want to if you've taken all of this apart you want about three turns full turns in which is a happy median for that uh, adjustment then you can either move it in to um, increase the 
the uh, fast idle speed or turning turn it left to decrease the fast idle speed I hope that made some sense when you look at it from from above this is what it looks like and again these are now seated properly so I'm gonna go ahead and remove one screw at a time and lock tie them in with a red Loctite okay so before I start lock tightening things in place I'm gonna install this rod with its lever and the, the two springs and I have a separate video just on that on how those are secured so what I what I'm gonna do first is take the this little um, camera lever and just attach it to the rod and it falls in place like that yes but before we do that I'm going to set it to the side and first we have this smaller spring make sure that everything is the coils are, are all nice and and um, they look right I don't want anything cross or anything like that so that one goes in place like so and we can put it in the shaft and then make sure the spring everything looks good and then we have we can rotate this let me put this side by see if that's gonna help okay so we have rotated the cam all the way toward the back so we have access to the slot because the spring has to fit in there like so and then it kind of snaps in place around the shaft and then when this is rotated it locks it in place so this won't come come out of there next I have to connect the um, the springs and that is a little more involved and again I have a, a video showing you every single detail so I'm gonna get my pliers we can start probably with this one here since it's kind of handy That's all there is for that one. Now this bottom one, the smaller spring has a hook that connects to the to this lever right under the tab here, right there. And then this is where it gets a little trickier. You want to basically take this end, and it's not that difficult. It's just kind of awkward all the while you're trying to keep the the coils properly aligned that is better And again I have a pretty detailed video just on installing these springs so 
I'll provide a link to that in the description. As you can see here, the primaries open first and then the secondaries follow because when you're driving slow you don't need the the secondaries to come into play and one is fully open they have to be at 90 degrees that looks about right okay so we have First we have to install this secondaries stop or lockout lever that just sits in here. And we also have to install the choke pull of uh, vacuum brake which has been completely assembled. Now this one has this cam that sits in here there's a, a, a bigger shoulder on this end and it fits in here and then what we have to do is fit this whole assembly into here and as it goes in we have to make sure that the choke a little bracket is aligned properly so it'll slide in quite tricky because the only way that this you have access to it is from above here so i'm going to try i don't know if this is going to work because this is too yeah it's too wide the magnet is not going to work that would have been perfect i think so scratch that idea <sighs> let me uh, make something So this is what I devised here. Even though this is uh, magnetic, it doesn't have enough strength to hold this by itself. So I added a little bit of a piece of masking uh, tape. And then when I'm done, I'll just pull the thing out of there because this is gonna be held in place by the shaft of the uh, choke so in the meantime what I'm going to do is because this has to let me show you here let me bring you in and see if I can show you this is the area where this goes in and and this is the hole where this shaft goes and then you want to line everything so you can see it there so everything will fit in there like a glove in theory. So we're going to start by, let's see if I can brighten this up a little bit, give it a little more, a better view of this. And my hands are going to be in the way. I'm sorry about that. There's nothing I can do. We have this pipe here, and this fits through there. Don't forget that this has to be in place. Uh, the little lockout. Uh, cam and it has to be positioned correctly of course then we have this other cam for the fast idle and this is how how it fits into the assembly and then we have this end that again we want to line up correctly with the uh, with this little bracket piece of cake right so let me also back up a little bit see if I can capture the whole action here in one shot so everything is somewhat somewhat lined up here we're going to start by pushing this in here carefully lifting the 
or rotating the shaft so it gets past the, the lockout. And then from above, you want to look in here. So, oh, and, I, and that thing kind of went in, so that's good. And don't push it. Sometimes you have to move these things a little bit so this will get seated properly in place. There it goes. And of course we still have to install a screw in here. For that I'm going to have to remove this little rod. But let me again bring you in. If you look in here can see my little device here screwdriver and then uh, all the way at the bottom there this lever is properly connected to the to the choke so then carefully I'm just gonna remove this little invention here I should have it patented it work very nicely. So that is connected. Everything seems to be properly in place, which is great. Next, I'm going to remove this little clip here, and it refuses to come off for whatever reason there we go it is tiny then we're going to disconnect this thing here and take it out of there now we have room for this screw okay so this is the right screw for the choke bracket I'm gonna go ahead and install it okay so that is secure in there now next we have to reinstall this little rod Let's call this one take two because I got this thing on backwards. Not a big deal, but I am glad I watched the um, the video I made when I was taking this apart. So Install this thing right way. This one goes down here and here. Okay, the clip is in. So, anyway, yeah, that makes more sense. So, this is. It was going, trying to push this at an angle before because I had it up here. So, so glad I noticed that. Okay, so what I'm, I am doing here is removing one screw and then applying a little bit of red thread locker and reinstalling the screw. And if you use the uh, the thread locker, the permanent kind, the red kind, uh, you don't need to stake the, the screws at that point. And that's it. I decided to buy this Realth M271. And it's a high strength 
thread logger. So I'm sure it's going to work just as well as the other brand. It was a heck of a deal, actually. I'll provide a link. So a couple of things. I was looking at the power piston. And in the kit, there is a new seal. This is the piece that I think is the new seal for that. It looks pretty much identical. But it has a little... It's, it's been sliced there so you can actually fit it around that thing. The only thing I, I didn't see is a, a spring, a new spring for the power piston. I guess I'm going to have to reuse this one. Not a big deal. So yeah. It's out of there. There we have the new one. Fit right. Yeah, that'll go in there just fine, which is great. Good. Okay, let's have a look at the power piston, the primary metering rods. You see this little clip, and what you want to do is take one of the metering rods, push in the little hole here, and carefully push the needle in there and hook it up in that loop. This is how that little retaining spring is supposed to be installed with the uh, primary metering rods.